What's a smaller detail that separates a house that's just okay from a house that's really nice? I'll go first. If the ceiling creates visual interest. Okay, look at this. This is a four and a half million dollar house here in St. Louis. It's nice, but look at the ceiling. It, it, it gets the job done, but there's nothing special about it. Like it's a nice house, the ceiling's just kind of flat. Versus this, the coffered ceiling is one of my favorites. Functionally, it does the same thing, but look at how different it looks. Or check out a nice tray ceiling like this. They got one over there and then one in the kitchen. It just makes it look more interesting. I'm telling you, luxury is all about the details. They didn't have to spend extra for a fancy ceiling, but they did because they understand this. It's a smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice. Hey, look at this. <laughs> Detail here being the quality of the roof and the angle of the roof. It's completely flat. Uh, this thing is in upstate New York in the mountains where it snows quite a bit. Clearing the snow off in the wintertime is going to be an absolute nightmare compared to something which has some thought put into it like this thing with a really steep roof angle, which won't give you any problems when it snows a lot. Detail means nothing if you don't consider the location. This thing I'm sure would be beautiful if it was in Texas. But the fact that they got the roof wrong is a red flag that there's probably a ton of other stuff wrong too. Like for the fact that there's really no way to insulate this thing. It's all just open glass and steel. And the steel fins even connect the inside to the outside. So the heat's just going to conduct all the way. So you can just imagine all the other problems uh, that you're going to have that the designer didn't think of. It's cute. Uh, it's probably very expensive. Uh, it's definitely a piece of shit. What's a smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice? If the back of the house looks just as nice as the front. Like this. That's the back. If the house has a porte cochère, which is this thing the cars use to get to the garage. If the garage doors are all custom, like these. If the material used on the front of the house goes all the way around the back, so like stone or brick, rather than vinyl. And my personal favorite, if the house looks better at night than it does during the day. Here's nighttime, and here's daytime. Like and follow for more. It's a smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice. So when I look at a house and I feel like there's something missing, usually that something is a dormer, this window that sticks out of the roof line. I think it can add a lot to a house to make it look more complex. So if you look at something simple like a Cape Cod, it's cute, it's got symmetry, but I just feel like there's too much roof line for such a small house. Same with this house, it's just a lot of roof to look at and I don't find it very appealing and I hate random skylights in the roof. And here's another example, I just hate it. So then you look at this, I think this is beautiful. The dormers go with the symmetry of the rest of the house while also being useful and look better than skylights. And that's the key, it's so important that the dormers go with the symmetry of the house and not against it, and also that they're not too big or too small. Here's an example of too big, it just overpowers the rest of the house. These are too small and they look like an afterthought. And then this is not the correct roof for this. What's a smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice? If the refrigerator blends in with the cabinets, right there's a fridge and the wine cooler. Hear me out, soft closed drawers. In the kitchen, all bathrooms and any wet bars. If the refrigerator and the freezer are separate appliances, Refrigerator's right there, blends in the cabinet, and the freezer's on this side of the kitchen. This is a house I closed last year. If you can go from one room to another with a different kind of flooring and not notice the transition in the floors when you step on it. Smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice. I have a lot to say about this, but the biggest difference between a house with good architecture and a house with not so good architecture is scale and mass. For example, this house is pretty nice. We have two masses, big one, small one, Windows are too scale with the rest of the house. It makes sense. The large mass here, the proportionally this smaller mass makes sense in relation to it. Versus something like this, which is a similar size house, but there's this huge mass here and another smaller mass here. This is not to scale with this. They just put things where they want. It doesn't look like it's a part of the same house. Again, something like this, which has a nice big mass, another mass that proportionally relates to it, windows that relate to the whole scale of the house. Something like this, where this huge roof does not relate to any of these masses, and these windows are just getting lost, completely lost. Something like this with a billion different things going on. Be it a nice house, you can tell they just put things where they wanted to. Like, there's a window here because they had a bathroom there. It's a smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice. Okay, so we all know about McMansions in terms of like architecture, like the super gaudy, big, 
like houses but we never really talk about small mcmansions there are these like smaller versions where you know it's built in like a development where they're basically touching each other all at the same time my problem with these houses is not like the proportions of the windows and stuff my problem with these houses is the garage the garage is always the focal point of the house in these houses and let me show you more examples I know the perception of this makes it look like it's skewed, but still, like this, your garage should not be the first thing you notice about a house, and it's because they try to squeeze all these houses into tiny plots, so the garage has to come first and not like looped around in the back or anything. I'm sorry, but you can't look at this house and tell me that it's aesthetically pleasing with this huge ass garage right here. It's a smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice. Oh, I have one. Tiles. Let me show you what I mean. I guess specifically I'm talking about patterned tiles. When it's done wrong or it's done like cheap or new, I think newness is the key because the quality is probably just not there. Like 1920s Spanish tile, are you gonna... Stairs are an offender often. Like I see what you were going for, I respect it, but it's, it's off. Versus something like this where they did like patterns staying the same on each step. Sure, I'm sure this comes down to price. I've never renovated anything in my life. I'm sure this tile is more expensive, but it's like a spreading out of the patterns. It's it's using it ever so gracefully, but it's not not being excited about patterns. Like this is so cool, but this feels timeless. It's so chic. This is stunning. Bury me in this. They broke it up. The colors, I mean. It's a smaller detail that separates a house that's okay from a house that's really nice. I'm very much into mid-century design, so I have a lot of opinions on this. Uh, but back in the 50s and 60s, houses that were built typically had really nice details. So they had terrazzo flooring, real wood flooring, real wood cabinets uh, that a carpenter uh, put in. Um, very nice details in modestly sized homes. But today we have these really huge houses that are, you know, 3,000, 3,500 square feet. But the, it's got, you know, fake wood flooring. It's got particle board cabinets. The crown molding is basically foam. Um, there's no real craftsmanship. And it's a big house and it's nice, but the details in it aren't nice at all. Um, and that's, to me, that's a really big thing is I would rather have a smaller house that has real quality construction uh, than a new house that's made out of cheap stuff. House that's okay from a house that's really nice. Solid. Wood. Doors.